So good morning, guys. Uh, I really feel like I'm back on my college days. So I think uh, I'm just like you around a few days back. So I passed out in 2016 as a mechanical engineer. And uh, in my third years itself, I, I went into some robotic field, especially into one interesting field known as robotic exoskeleton. So this is actually a great concept where you can see in the movies Iron Man and all. So uh, that is very advanced and futuristic. Just like all the innovators think. So something happened in between. The thing is that I, I saw one uh, article in the newspaper, it's about an accident. And the accidents uh, uh, happen to the people who do the sanitation, cleaning, cleaning of manholes. So that was what happened. Uh, and I saw the article and I just thought about it just like everyone is an accident. I never thought it is happened because of uh, some issues of uh, uh, technological inability in the sanitation area. I didn't thought that. But after some time, other accidents also happened in the state. And then the IT secretary of uh, our state is actually called us because we have some uh, records in the developing robotic things and all. So he, I was still studying at that time and he, he told me like, uh, why can't you create something to solve this issue? Because the state is already trying to bring some solution to solve this issue. So at that time only I was thinking, oh my God, this is happening because the people are entering into the manhole because of there is no technology. And we are, we are actually living in a situation where we have machines which is there in Mars, we are controlling it from here. So this is not actually a technological problem, but rather it is a problem where we, we feel the sanitation kind of some areas, which is not that much uh, uh, something to improve a lot of technology in it. So just like what it says, I was also thinking to outer space, into the futuristic technology. I was working in such things, innovating a lot of things. But I never looked down into the society and really tried to understand the problem. But this simple incident has actually helped me to understand there are a lot of problems. So I put my attention into the sanitation area. And this is uh, one of the problem which is there in the sanitation. And uh, uh, these are some data that I collected and for your awareness I am just telling this. It is prohibited by law actually. There are different laws passed by MS Act to end this practice. But even if it is not there, there is no law also, this should not be happened because it's an inhuman practice. We, are, we, we can't let our brothers going down there. But this was the real scenario, which is still now also happening. And social discrimination is the main reason behind this. Why I say it's like a particular caste people are doing this job for years. They don't, have no, uh, they don't know how to work in other field and people will not allow also. This social discrimination, caste by system, untouchability, and all those things are behind this social evil. And uh, last, the health problem these people are taking is very high. And they, I even uh, heard in one interview of Manuel Scarlett was saying that I am taking people's dirt, it's because of that I'm getting a lot of ill. And if I didn't do that, the other people, the people who create the dirt, will get ill. So this is the truth, but we never even see a manual scavenger, we never even think about them, we don't, we don't do anything for them. So I'll, I'll give you the numbers, like how many people are there. Around 4.5 million scavengers are there and in India, and it is very high if you are comparing to the other world as well. And in 22,000 people are died doing this manual scavenging, cleaning manuals till 2013. And these are official records, I believe it is, will be more than that. Because uh, uh, when people go for a survey, a survey to understand how many people are there, the people will not come and say, I have a manual scavenger because they are not very proud of it. And 98% of the people who is into this profession is having a lot of diseases. So these are some understanding which gives me, which gives me inspiration to work in this area and solve this problem as soon as possible if I could. So this, this, this data is actually give you an insight that it is not a problem of developing country or developed countries. It is a problem of underdeveloped countries also and everywhere this is happening. So these are some accident data which has happened throughout the globe. So this is a global crisis. And everywhere even developed countries also didn't thought the sanitation is a major area that we can put a lot of research and make a costly stuff to solve this issue. They have human power that they can do it. So I'll now give you some information why actually human required to clean manholes, sewer lines and everything. So the entire construction of the manhole is for the man. That's why it is manhole. 
the name itself says that it's for man, human being. So in sewer lines and sewer system, the, this is actually a pathetic work. So what the people do is like, people el enter into it for the cleaning purpose. And there are a lot of design difficulties to use any other equipment, like normal equipment, and control uh, by putting it from the top and controlling it uh, from the outside, the normal mechanical equipment will not work properly. I'll give you the details. The entry diameter of a manhole will be coming from 45 centimeters into 60 centimeters. It can only fit a person. And it has steps. So these steps and the environment. And inside the diameter will be much bigger and the depth will go more than maybe 10 meters sometime. So nobody can control uh, putting up by putting a some, something from a normal equipment from the top. And he cannot get a full, full level cleaning. Every time it, it demands people to enter into it for the cleaning purpose. So they enter with shovels like things and they collect all the sweet and into put it in a bucket and they'll take it outside. And there are some other equipments like a sucking machine and all is there. So you may think also why this thing is uh, will not work. The problem is the sucking is actually a flexible pipe. So if you put it inside the manhole, it will suck all the water. But water is not the problem, not the real problem of the blo uh, blockage or choking or anything. The real problem is the slit beneath the water and the manhole itself actually a big tank. So if a big lorry is coming and suck the water itself also, only one lorry can do one manhole, not more than that. But that's not that's not the way that we have to treat this problem. That's why human labor is again in, involved in this. People will enter and take the slit out, then the water will flow through the sewer system. So, and there are some other equipments like jetty machine. Jetty machine is used uh, uh, to clean, the, like the, there is uh, sewer lines like this. These lines also get chopped. So sometimes what happens is like people put the jetting machine into this line. Jetting is a water pressurized jet. It will maneuver itself. It is more than 1000, 1500 PSI pressure and it will destroy everything in its way. So it's clear the block and all. But the problem with that is also sometimes if depth is very, very low, people have to enter for the positioning. So all these part human requirement is there. So every existing equipment need work properly with the help of the human being. So human being, cannot be avoided from this situation. So we thought about it, how to solve this scenario. So the main thing is like in this sanitation for the cleaning of manual and sewer lines, human being is there. And we have to take the part of human being by using a machine. So that's why we thought of a robotic machine. So this robotic machine, because without, uh, without taking away the need of a human being from the manhole, we cannot do anything. That's the first thing because the sanitation is uh, for everyone. It is very important. So we uh, we thought about making a robot. So why robotics? That's the next question. The thing is like normal equipment will not function properly because the human level flexibility cannot be achieved by a simple mechanical equipment or some things like the sucking machine or anything. It should have that human level of intelligence or at least that level of flexibility of a human arm. Then the what will be more. Uh, more efficient. That's that's why we thought of a robotic machine. And we then thought it's like these people are doing during the surveys we understand these people are doing this work for years. And if we take their job out, these people will not get another job. They are not educated or skillful to do any other job. So this is a very, very uh, dramatic situation for us because these people are even getting into the manhole for living. And if you are taking their job out, it's it's a serious problem. And the government is the major uh, a major party who implement this uh, project. So in such situation also, the government cannot uh, make people unemployment by doing a project. That's a big challenge for the government as well. So we thought out what is like, these people have uh, intelligence. Like they know how the manhole is. They know how, what to, uh, how to work in the manhole, the condition and everything. So they have certain data in their brain. But if you're creating a similar kind of uh, robot with all those intelligence and everything, it will take a million dollar into that project and also it costs big and the project timeline is also very big. So we thought of uh, combining these two opportunities just uh, like that. And what we have done is like we you, uh, we give the operations or we give the data to control the robot into a human being. So what they do is like they put, they, with their knowledge they'll put and communicate with the robot and the robot will do the work what they have to do. It's like robotic surgery. The surgeon will be there and the robotics is used for an efficient way of performing it not taking the risk part. So that was our idea. But doing that also, there is a big challenge there. The challenge, is, challenge was is that 
these people are not having that much skill to operate a robotic uh, machine. So we have to find a method. For that, we we invented a kind of technology which is not a smart user interface. It's actually a concept which will provide a lot of graphical input to uh, communicate between a person and a robot. The robot will give graphical information to the person to talk with the person, and the person will talk with his experience. And we we have a stand and we have a program in between as well. And then last evolution. Because uh, the untouchability in this particular job is because uh, happen happening because of the job itself. Even if it is a high caste person or whoever he may, he went into sewer line and then come out, we have little problem to uh, touch him. That, that's the problem. It's not about the caste, it's about the work. So when that work is actually taken care of some other thing, other mission, then this untouchability and caste system will dissolve and evolve into a, a future model and everybody will feel like equal. So that was our dream. So we built a machine uh, from scratch and that is this uh, machine, which is actually a complete automation of human work. So it will do everything a human has to do inside a manhole. It took a lot of time. I will not say it's a certain thing happened. We, uh, we need to build the prototype initially, then the prototype is working in a laboratory environment. Then after that we tested it in the real sewer line and we will get connected, we will take the feedback and improve and improve and this is the latest model that we are actually doing in the field. So it is intelligent and efficient customizable to different kind of sanitation and respect and dignity to the worker is the main thing that we are providing through this particular project. And smart user interface is the interface that I already told you about. So this is a working, like a person will be there and he have a control panel and the control panel will be having a monitor. So he, through that monitor he can access and see what is inside the manhole. And he has a uh, like switches and all those things to communicate with the uh, robot as well. And the robot is actually in the, uh, this, this slide and this slide you can see it can vary its diameter because when the entry is very limited diameter, after that it can improve its diameter and fix into the manhole walls. This manual fixing, uh, wall, wall fixing is very necessary because it has to do a lot of mechanical action and this is the support that we, we are providing through the man, I mean, this walls of the manhole. And it is a bucket system which collects the waste out and it has a robotic arm. You can see here as well the robotic arm will do the, all the human arm requirements. So it will do everything literally. And uh, uh, the things like here you can see the jetting machine. Uh, the jetting pipe is can also be positioned through using this arm and this arm end effector, you may aware of that, the end effector is designed for almost every purpose that has to be done by a human being. So uh, as we, uh, as I told, a lot of field work is studied and we implemented this project in throughout all the, all, almost every part of South India. And these are some pictures that we collected uh, during this program which is conducted. And uh, we also do the rehabilitation program. Rehabilitation program around 80 plus manual scavengers are went through this program. This program uh, really helped them to become a robotic operators and as well as they helped us to understand their problems while dealing with the user interface. And that has actually helped us to reduce a lot of technical difficulty in the communication. So that's why we have done. So our aim is to create something which will help all the manual scavengers throughout the world. That was our aim. So that's why we have done the rehabilitation program as well as, well as we want to help them to grow into robotic operators. So technology is actually a true lifesaver. In every problem you can use this method. Like eradication of using, eradication of that particular social problem by using technology. Everybody can think about it and empowering them. Definitely if we influence a normal way of the society, definitely a lot of problems will come out. So if we can add that pain points, like the people who get affected by this project or something into that project and we can evolve them with the technology, I believe that is the real technological revolution. So this is actually a real uh, life story. This has happened there and this person, uh, this person is one of the reasons for this project to initiate because when after these two accidents, this happened in our state and this picture of him is actually came in newspaper again asking you are going to kill the, to the government, you are going to kill more people doing the same thing. So the government is under very, very great pressure and they don't know what to do also. So that's why because they try to fill this problem with the existing technology that they didn't find. So that's how all this project is started. And what we have done is like we understand his pain point and we give a tool to work him efficiently and, he, and we also give him training to uh, rehabilitate himself to a robotic operators. 
and now he is the one who is handling this project in Kerala and he is getting more than what he has earned before and also the efficiency of the cleaning is also very high comparing to the old model and the, everybody is so happy by this project. So uh, just like I want to, I, I want to end my speech by saying something like if you look around, if you look down or you, if you look around also you will see a lot of problems which is there in the society and you have something called as the engineering, the skill that you are having. If you start working in each and every problem, then at least if you can in invent a small tool also, it will definitely affect of millions of people. And I believe that is the technological revolution. And if you can do it, the world will become very beautiful place very soon. Thank you so much.